Hey guys, yeah, once again, I'm gonna do a little commentary for one of my old speed draw videos. Uh, so this is what uh, Beluga Weekly number one hundred and forty-seven. I remember it well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is one with Hank D and the Parasites. You know what? I I was listening to uh, an old episode of the Beluga Teams podcast recently, and in that I was talking about. Um, yeah, the, these characters, because I, I I was sort of re reviewing another Beluga Weekly comic strip that had these characters in it. So the the, the idea with, with them is they're a, a band and they're made up of insects. Um, Hank's the only one who isn't literally a parasite. The other three are like a mosquito, a flea and a tick. Um, and Hank is a cockroach. So that's why he isn't... Uh, that, that's why they're called... Hank D and the parasites, implying that um, yeah, the, the parasites are kind of an additional thing, <laughs> or whatever, I don't know. Um, and I got rid of Hank at, one, at some point, I think because I just, it, it I, I did a lot of comic strips with him in it, and I, I had a hard time just giving him character, like actually making him, this, this is probably the, the most expressive he is, because you're actually watching him sing right now. Um, it's just me, it's not moving particularly fast. Obviously it's a lot faster than it was originally. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, so the, you do actually get to see Paula. She's in the, the last panel in this one. Uh, I know that. Because uh, Paula sort of took over as the uh, lead singer. I don't know what happened to Hank. I don't know if he died or he um, just, just left his off doing something else because I, I just didn't care enough about him really S somehow um, it, it was just one of those things where it, it seemed better like I think at, at first when I when I considered the idea of Paula uh, being the new lead singer I couldn't quite imagine it it was you, you sort of have that moment of thinking I can't really imagine it being any other way but at the same time I, I didn't know if, if if I was going to be able to do a lot with Hank, and I, th I thought I, I want to do something. And um, over time, I grew to really like the idea of Paula being because I think Paula and the Parasites actually sounds better. It does sound like a a better name for a band. I think I, this is one of the things that's helped me to realise that um, no matter uh, how many ideas. I'm going with because uh, yeah, with Beluga Weekly there are so many different uh, these ideas um, at, at the time I, I was saying I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and all this um, so yeah I, I've, I've come to realise I can make change, I can change my mind about things uh, no one's going to freak out if I'm like okay I'm going to remove this character and replace it with this character um because that, that's really, uh, that's what happens. That's what, what you end up doing with these things. I really rushed this one. Like, you know, even in real time, uh, I wasn't um, spending an awful long time on, on these images. Um, yeah, this, this is really badly done right now. Um, but yeah. Uh, th this is why I actually feel like Beluga Weekly is kind of like a rough draft of the stuff that I'm currently working on and the stuff that I'm going to be doing in future. I want it to be something that I can look back and learn from because it, it is looking increasingly like I might not carry on with Blue Weekly. I mean, you know, never say never and all that, but um, no, nobody seems to miss it that much. Um, and there are other things that I can be doing. Again, it's one of the things I think I'm, I'm, I'm just getting better at moving on and doing other things, and just experimenting because um, I, I don't. I just don't think it's worth um, getting too defensive or protective about my ideas when they could be done in many different ways. And it's more fun to experiment and actually see what happens when you go in a different direction. Uh, yeah, so I also because recently I, I did the um, anniversary live stream 
and I showed a picture of a couple of other cartoon bands that I came up with more recently. Um, and what I'm starting to realise is, because, because I'm, I, I like music quite a lot, um, when, uh, when, when I come up with a fictional band, I really find myself thinking, okay, so what would it be like if these guys really existed? If um, people actually got to hear them, their songs, got to go and see them at concerts, um, and you, you start to get an idea of what their history is like. Uh, and also you start thinking about the individual band members and what their personalities are. So uh, it's it's a great way of coming up with characters and giving them personalities and histories and just working out uh, what it is that makes them special, why we should care about them, or, or, um, how you can make them interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's it's one of the things that I, I feel like I should recommend. That if you if you if you feel like if if you're creating original characters, and if like me you've got to a point of thinking, how can I make them more interesting and actually do stuff with them? Put them in a band, basically. <laughs> you see, I, I couldn't really be bothered to uh, draw a crowd of cartoon characters, so I just kind of did shapes for the heads um i don't think yeah i i, I made a weird choice with the color apparently because uh, the, the, the is, is like kind of a silhouette of a crowd and i thought maybe a light gray and then <laughs> then i think it turned into a more blue sort of color i think um yeah so i was very lazy doing this one um, are these the, the characters I did before? Here's the thing: I, I I did a lot of generic-looking bug characters whenever I did Hank D and the Parasites in, in comics. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it was like a, a miniature world. I suppose I um, I included Beryl and Stan in a lot of the same uh, drawings that I did because I. Uh, as I actually had these characters who were meant to be the the actual size of you know Beryl and Stan are tiny little rodents and uh, these guys are all bugs so uh, it it seemed to make sense to, to sort of include them in the same comics from time to time like all of the little characters they kind of had their own community um, but I remember in, in new stuff I, I would have Beryl and Stan talk to Eugene and that was quite fun because he's a beluga whale so he's really big um, so yeah I, I had a lot of fun uh, you know, put, putting the smallest characters in with the biggest characters so yeah this is Paula um, I think because I, I I remember just having an image of a bug who, who wore like a, a, a little cap and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll make a a firefly. Like just sort of gradually, it, you know, I, I found myself piecing it together. Um, and and it was just, yeah, it, it it was mostly just the appearance. I think once I got the appearance down, this is what I'm finding. You, you draw a character, and then you start coming up with ideas of. Uh, you know, what their background is, what's what's actually going on in there, because um, there's just something about the appearance of a character. You know, because I I I try to uh, draw what's in in my head, the image that I see, but then it becomes. You know, I, I I I I may have some kind of idea of what their personality is like. Yeah, look, I've got the, I made the crowd light blue. I don't know why I did that. I thought because it, it it's meant to be a daylight. It's meant to be, you know, so I, I wasn't really sure about. This is what he looks like on stage. He has a bit of a different design for his everyday look. Yeah, a lot of my characters, I just I'll, I'll draw them, and then just from looking at the pictures that I've drawn, I then start to have ideas for what kind of situations I can put them in. It's really just based on what I have already drawn.
of these characters. So yeah, I think I'm just finishing up now. I'm putting them into the individual panels. So yeah, by the way, uh, I'm trying to get back into the habit of doing these commentaries because um, I have a lot of these videos to get through. Um, and I'm becoming less lazy than I was before. He's saying, your words here. <laughs> Yeah, um, so maybe I'll, I'll, tr I'll try and get around to doing more of these. There's just there, there are quite a lot of things that uh, I'd also like you know, like to do. Certain things that are just m making it a bit hard. <laughs> I don't know. That's um, what we're doing now, and I'm going to draw Eugene. What's Eugene doing? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, he's putting earplugs <laughs> into his non-ears. Oh, what's that dreadful racket? There he's putting the other one into the other ear hole. Yeah, so uh, just colour him in and then we're done with it. I was so lazy with this one. <laughs> I'm glad that I tried a bit harder with a lot of the later ones. Actually, thought a bit more about what needs to go into each panel. Oh yeah, and the other thing is, um, I, I had to write lyrics to a song, and it's re they're, they're really dumb lyrics. Um, I, you can't really. I, I don't even know what it's meant to sound like because I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I won't read them, but um, I, th I think I've learned not to try and write any songs for my characters. Uh, uh, if they're in a band, then the reader can decide what their music sounds like, because I'm just I, I I can't do that kind of thing. I I, I don't write music or anything like that. But that's uh, Beluga Weekly number one hundred and forty-seven. Hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about that, and do join me uh, the next time I'll be doing one of these, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, find out what that looks like. Okay. <laughs>